Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. War is peace. So this is the YouTube user who said that I'm all over the place. Okay. Whom I addressed in this video and he left a comment about how war is peace. So let's read. Why I as why well, I assume I said your antennae are flapping all over the place lately that it's because you haven't taken sides in the conflict. Well, that was explained in the video. Maybe you should pay attention. The point is not to take sides. The point is to see objective reality as it is. Wow. Right? What I say is true because I say it is true. So far, right? We'll, we'll see what happens. So far, that's all you've given me. The point is to see, that's why I provided you with the concept of public security material so you could get a better idea of where Putin is coming from. Okay, so objective reality is Putin's opinion. Bravo, bravo. I've already addressed all of this in a variety of videos, so I won't be going over it here today. But how Putin feels in short, okay, is not objective re Yeah, it's objectively true that he feels a certain way but it's just the same objectively true how the west feels so if we're going to make this argument that he gets to do what he gets to do because he feels this way how do you defeat the argument that the west gets to do what they get to do because they feel that way how what well, you take a side <laughs> dummy dummy but, but that's an objective reality i i know what the justifications are from Putin's side. And I know what the justifications are from the West. And I think it's all bullshit. It's Cold War 2.0. The same bullshit, the same frame game they've been playing with us forever. Fuck. Put How Putin feels is objectively... Putin's feelings and opinions are objective truth, right? This is what I mean when I say Putin thinks or the, these people think Putin is God. They think Putin's word is like, this is how fucking brainwashed you are and infatuated. So long story short, if you propose the argument that because Putin feels a certain way, he gets to do certain things. Obviously, you have to accept the counter argument that the West gets to do certain things because they feel a certain way. Okay. And choosing one opinion over one man's opinion over another man's opinion or one group's opinion over another group's opinion is not objectively true it has nothing to do with objectivity it's all opinion you're just choosing a side jesus Christ. like this this isn't rocket science is it right but this is how this is how you brainwash uh, historically how people have been brainwashed to do the bidding of these elites, right? Because, like, what George Bush said, right? God told me to invade Iran. Or oh, sorry, Iraq, right? God told me. And God we trust. So, to war we go. This is it. Like, you know, these, these are, these people have, like, divine right they have the divine right of kings and they get to do what they say they get to do. It's hilarious to me how orthodoxy will make, will clown um, the papacy saying that the Pope is infallible, right? How the Catholics will say the Pope is infallible. And then they, they push the divine right of kings. Like, it's, that's different. But I'm sure there's a justification for why it's different than blah, 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 blah. Right? Fuck out of here. Nonsense. Uh, by the way, I disagree with both stances, okay? No man is... has that kind of power, okay? The fuck? Like, what the fuck? Let me take a sip of my coffee. Not God-given. Yeah, they may have that kind of power because well, they just, you know, have those resources to, to tell other people what to do.
anyway. Uh, I am anti-war, is what I said, right? Well, who ain't? <laughs> People who are pro-war. <laughs> Um, war shouldn't exist. War shouldn't exist. Okay, so that's... I've never said that. War shouldn't exist. I mean, I guess I agree with that statement. Geopolitics shouldn't... Okay, this is just like you're attributing shit to me that I've never said. War exists and geopolitics exists. Right. The reason why war exists is because there are people who are pro-war, like you. Right? If everybody was anti-war, it wouldn't exist. It's really that simple. Right? So I'm pushing for no war. You're pushing for war. Well, no shit war exists. Because people, for whatever reason, like to see other people suffer. Or they're ambivalent to it. Till it comes to their hometown. Then they're anti-war. No, no, it, it doesn't work that way. Anti-war is a principled stance. You're not anti-vegan on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then you're pro-vegan on the weekend. That's incoherent. That's a contradiction. That's nonsense. You're not anti-vegan. You're not anti-war. The anti-war stance is very simple and clear to understand. Now, if somebody invades you, obviously, you have the right to defend yourself, right? Obviously, but that no one invaded Russia. Nobody invaded Russia. Russia invaded what they call a sovereign country. They started a war. The anti-war stance is against starting any kind of war. Not defending yourself, but aggressing against other countries nations, people, starting a war. But Putin had no choice. It's, it's objective reality that Putin had no choice, right? So, so what made it thus that on that specific day, right, the day, the day before he had a choice, but the, the second before he went into war. He had a choice because he wasn't going into war. And then he went to war a second later. Because all of a sudden, he what changed? What changed? He decided to go to war. He wanted to go to war. That's why he went to war. He had a choice. Like diplomacy. Not invading a foreign country. Right? Waiting till he is invaded to defend himself. Right? Duh. <laughs> but I already covered all of this. You're not advancing the argument. You're just saying nonsensical shit, contradicting yourself, saying I'm anti-war, except for those times that I'm pro-war, right? War is peace. Com complete and utter incoherence. Zero, like, comprehension of... Basic concepts, like what's objective and what anti. Like you don't know what objective means. You don't know what anti means. And th but this is the problem with why why we find ourselves as a society in this pickle, right? People are fucking incoherent, right? They have no principles. It's whatever's clever, right? But in the given context, that's a bit of a hippie. So this is um, in false equivalents, ad hominem, fallacies, uh, probably a non sequitur too, right? <laughs> You'd like just a fallacy after fall. This is this is what I mean, right? When I tell you guys that any ideology is likely to just be wrong. That the way to implement any true system of organization, whatever you have, whatever it is you want to implement, the only way, right, to implement 
a true, just, moral system of any kind is to speak the truth, start out by speaking the truth, right? And follow the laws of logic. That's it, right? It's really that simple. But it isn't because, well, people are just brainwashed. They have agendas. They feel, right? We feel. I must follow my base desires. That's the problem. That's why we're falling. We just do what we do as, as thou wilt, right? We do the things we feel like doing. <laughs> That's the problem. Instead of doing things that are true and moral, right? So, you know, like... First of all, saying that that's like a bit of a hippie cop-out. Well, yeah, hippies were also anti-war. But they, from what I understand, they were pro-free love. They were they were pro-open borders, right? They were just anti-tradition, super progressive, uh, pro-heavy drug use, you know astral traveling, whatever the hell, right? All the crazy shit, right? So that's like... So I guess just just because I walk upright, I, I must be a monkey or an ape because I sometimes walk on two, on, on two feet. Then that, that means that you're a monkey. You're an ape. Like, wow, dude. And it's it's an ad hominem, right? It's not an argument. Just because they were hippies, that doesn't mean they were wrong in their anti-war stance. Because they were, might have been wrong about a whole bunch of other shit, right? So what fallacy is that? I mean, bro, you wrote like four fallacies into one sentence. And you probably like, you probably think you said something intelligent. And let, let me just keep keep on piling on, on, on you because this is... This is, well, it'll explain to you what's happening, right? This is exactly the sort of tactic that Marxists advocated, right? And coincidentally, I guess, coincidentally, not if you listen to Yuri Bezmianov, uh, a tactic the CIA liked to use too, right? Shame the opposition. Use these ad hominems so that no one even listens to what the arguments are, right? Bravo, bravo! You're a cultural. Let, let let me use, let me use the devices you like to use. You're a cultural Marxist, huh? Huh? How's that? <laughs> Geopolitics shit. Like that's just okay. Let me just pull something out of my ass because it feels good, right? It just feels good. Geopolitics shouldn't exist. And so I'm talking about diplomacy, right? And he's saying that I'm I'm saying that. Geopolitics shouldn't exist. War is politics now? I guess so. Is it though, really? I'm not too sure about that. But both of them... Oh, really? I didn't know that. Both of them always have. Both of them always will. So, so because... This is circular reasoning, right? Because war, therefore war. <laughs> <laughs> right like we can't it's it, that's somehow supposed to be an argument to the anti-war stance there's always been war so there will always war because war i'm saying no more war please and he's saying war because war like wow you've, you're programmed right both of them always will. Incidentally, my comment is in your community section where you state that Alexander Dugan is Putin's brain, which is simply not... Well, that's just your opinion, okay? Uh, the opinion in the West is that he is... Maybe they overstate his importance, which I already addressed, okay? All you have to do is... Listen to Dugan, listen to some of his ideas, okay? And then listen to what Putin says. And there is, they don't agree to a T, 
right? Because Dugan is most likely uh, a Freemason of the of the French persuasion, Russian by 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 today, who wants to create a global empire with Russia at the helm and the West, right? It's a different branch of Freemasonry who want the exact same thing except with the West at the helm, right? And Putin is a politician, so he has to be pragmatic, right? He cannot afford to go to war with the West because he will likely lose, okay? And he won't even be able to realize his dream of great Russia, right? So before he can even think about running, he needs to learn how to crawl and walk first. Dugan is an ideologue who's just possessed by manifest, the Russian version or Eurasian version of manifest destiny. Just go read a little bit of his book. It's all in there, right? Uh, his ideology is to, yeah, he and Putin align for the time being. Because before Dugan can realize his dream, Putin has to realize his. So they agree. Whereas Putin will... We'll see, right? If he is given Ukraine by the West. You know, is he going to stop there? I guess we'll see. But for the time being, Dugan and Putin align very much so. In, in many respects. All you have to do is just listen to both of them talk. And you'll see how in alignment they are. Now, whether that's because Dugan influenced him or not, I guess that's up to uh, speculation. But, but that's not the point. The point is that they agree. That's the point. And if they agree on some things... And that's clear to see. It's safe to assume that maybe they agree on a whole lot more. Speaking of geopolitics, dork. Right? Ge geopolitics isn't just the here and the now, as you pointed out beautifully, right? War always happened. It's happening now and it always will. That, that's the complexity with which we're dealing here, right? Yeah, when, when you're talking about geopolitics, you're planning years into the future. So, it's fair to talk about it in these terms, but if you disagree, I don't care. That's not my stance. My premises are what they are, and from those premises follow my conclusions. You merely saying that it's simply not the case when I give you evidence for why it is the case... It's not an argument, and you lose the debate. So unless you could prove, show some evidence that that's not the case, right? For the time being, clearly, I'm the one who's correct, at least to some degree. Whether he influenced him or not, clearly they agree on the agenda, if only for the time being. That is obvious. But I, but I know it rubs people the wrong way to know where this guy came from, right? He's a Nazi Bolshevik, right? <laughs> At least formerly, right? He's reformed now. He's he's advanced his, his ideology, which he says is most like Nazism and Bolshevism combined, right? These two great ideologies morphed into one and uh, evolved. Right. <laughs> Evolved to what? Include Asia? Because they got the military might too? Because Russia can't do it on their own? That is that the evolution? Well, some of it probably. So but this is this is the, the problem, right? Motherfuckers are just incoherent, right? Belligerent. And that's that is exactly the problem, right? So in closing, anti-war what versus pro-war, it's kind of binary, homie. There is no gray area, okay? Antichrist or Christ. You don't you don't get to go to church and pray 
every day on the week and then drink baby's blood twice on Sunday. All right? There's something, there's something wrong with that. Thanks for watching.